Hi there, and welcome to our continuation of less frequently encountered oracle constructs. And in particular, in this lecture, we are going to discuss large objects. Yes, globs, blobs, and other things that go bump in the night. Um, I'm not even going to pretend I do not believe these things belong in your database. But that doesn't preclude the fact that they exist and we need to figure out a good strategy for managing them. A little story to start off with. Uh, back a long time ago, there was a very successful law firm. Every day, a bunch of very good people produced a whole bunch of very important documents. They chucked them away into paper file systems and there they lived, never to be touched again. At one point, one of the lawyers, one of the senior lawyers, brought in a computer specialist to help them computerize this whole system. While not surprisingly, they put these documents into the database as blobs and clubs. A great idea, guys. Less than one year later, I was called in to clean this mess up. We took a look and ultimately decided that there were perfectly reasonable commercial document management systems, Documentum, for example, that could do the job, but that their Oracle database was not the place for this stuff to live. What's the lesson to be learned? We all understand that files are an important part of our life and that you can't just stick them in a drawer or a file cabinet anymore. That's not the way you share and or secure documents. You need a mechanism for doing that. Let's take a look at some of Oracle's implementations with respect to the CLOB, the BLOB, and the B file. But then also, let's take a look at what I have encountered over the years as a standard practice for managing these files. That seems to work just fine and doesn't kill performance. Let's take a look. All right, let's start as we always do by opening up the lecture23script.txt file and checking out our code for this lecture. All right, looks like this first statement creates a table named Clobs Are Bad. Uh, very cute, Rick, but I can almost hear the academics talking now. Hey, storing large objects in a database rather than the external file is a good idea because then you're sure they're backed up along with the rest of your database. Besides, if you store them outside the database and then delete the pointer row from the database, you orphan that external file. My response to those same critics, what, you don't back up your file system every day just as you do your database? What, you can't write a simple Oracle package which automatically wakes up once a month and deletes the orphaned files? Come on, that's not an argument. Anyway, back to our CLOB example. Looks like we have a CLOB ID, a field called my big fat CLOB of type CLOB, a couple of descriptions, and then a fake foreign key to some owner of this file. First off, I'm guessing a little simple definition is in order here. What the heck is a CLOB anyway, other than a really goofy made up word? Well, in fact, it stands for character based large object. Example, big fat text file. Next, create table statement. This time we're creating a table named blobs are bad. Well, if nothing else, I'm consistent standing atop this soapbox. Same sort of thing here, except this time our field name is my big fat blob of type blob. That is binary large object. Uh, example, JPEG, WAVE, EXE, something like that. Okay, next create table statement named B files are stupid. Here our field name is my thin stupid B file and it's of type B file. B files differ from blobs and clobs in that the entire file is not stored in the database, but instead just a pointer to the external file is stored. 
Well, Rick, you say, and that kind of implementation ought to make you happy, right? You got that big file out of the database. Well, not really. Wait till you see how Oracle implemented the B file type, and then maybe you'll change your mind. I, I think they left a few opportunities on the table. Finally, our last create statement produces a table named Rick's Preferred Method. <laughs> okay, very subtle, Rick. Anyway, this one has separate fields for the directory path and the file name, as well as a field type which points to a base table of extensions and their associated open routine programs. All right, let's move on to some inserts. Here in this set of statements, we're adding three rows to the clobs, our bad table. Nothing exciting at all going on here. These short strings of characters are readily accepted by our clob type and all's just fine with the world again. All right, next we move on and do inserts into the blobs are bad table. Please note that the third insert statement was intentionally created as an example of failure. Go ahead and run that insert and you'll get an invalid hex number. Net, although these blob values look like strings, they're actually a hex values in order to get into the blob type. Okay, now before we can insert rows to our B file table, we have to set up an external storage location for those files. To do that, we first need the privs to create a new directory. As such, we log in as system and grant create any directory to the MyStore user. Now we can log back in and create the external directory which we've called external B files and located at C SQL B files. Two things to remember on these guys. First, the directory must exist and Oracle must have write privs to that directory. Otherwise that statement won't work. Okay, now we can move on to our B file insert statements. First thing to note is the B file constructor. This guy takes two parameters. The first is the local name of the directory object we just created in our case external B files and the second is the actual file name itself. Check this out though. Our second insert statement points to a non-existent file name. Sure, Oracle goes ahead and merely completes the insert despite totally lack of referential integrity between the external directory and our database now. Come on guys, you have a PLS package out there called dbms underscore lob which has in it a file exists b file function. Maybe it would have been nice you actually had used it. <laughs> it would have made some sense, I think. All right, we still have an insert a couple of rows into my preferred method table. Not surprisingly, I'm sure with the first statement, but check out the second one. Same problem. We just created a database pointer to a non-existent external file. Oops, maybe we need to remember that little hole in the strategy going forward. Don't worry about it. My experience is that people put a trigger on that table that does the file existence check and then it throws an error if the file doesn't exist. Clever, clever, clever. All right, now as standard practice, we typically do do a select star after inserts to ensure everything went okay. As you can see here, our select statement on the clobs are bad table behaved just fine. Nothing surprising there. Well, developer probably did the right thing with the blob field associated with our blobs are bad table. No way really to display that thing not knowing what type of information it was actually retaining. Hey guys, got a blob here, not sure how to display it. You know, lacks elegance, but really no other options in their defense. Developer does do a better job on the B file types, except of course, it didn't deref the external B files directory. Hey guys, still really don't know where this file lives. That little tidbit of information is probably going to be important to the programmer if they need to open this file up. Again, Oracle, come on, go the extra mile, finish it. Finally, I'm sure you know where this is going by this time. When we do our select star on my preferred table, we see both the directory path as well as the file name. And of course, we really did have a base table of associated programs. We could join that guy in and 
tell you as a programmer what uh, executable to use to open the file up. Ta-da! What did they say in Top Gun? An example of how not to do it. Thank you, Oracle, for the B file type. But please, in the next release, clean it up just a little bit because you're so close but not quite there. Okay, Maverick. Yeah, hit the brakes. The bogey flew right on by, but I think we showed that it was not the preferred solution. Um, Oracle, you might go to school on that one. I mean, the B files is certainly a good attempt at storing the actual documents outside with pointers from the inside, but you got to clean up the implementation a little bit because it's still just too loose. People are going to continue to create their own solutions as long as the B file's not exactly getting it done in a perfect fashion. To that end, we did look in this particular lecture at blobs and clobs. Uh, if you've got to put these in your database, please don't call me. Um, I'm not interested in fixing your mess. Uh, nobody needs to look on the inside of documents. And if you do get by a document management system, if all you're doing is securing and sharing these things, then uh, Rick's preferred method uh, which is really nothing more than the B file solution that actually works is probably what everybody is using. Oh, no big deal. Regardless, thanks for hanging in there with me on large objects. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about XML. There's something that is really becoming very popular as a temporary means of data transport outside of a database and as such clearly an important thing for us to learn about so we'll take a look at that in the next lecture in the interim hey you go out there and have some fun but learn something new every day <laughs>